Welcome back to the 2024 Women's Basketball Media Days. I am Missy Heydrich, and here now with a contingent from Texas Tech. Coach Krista Gerlich, her fifth year in Lubbock. We, she is joined by junior guard Bailey Maupin, junior guard Jasmine Shavers, and graduate senior Jordan Merritt. Coach, you're five now at your alma mater. Uh, you have a nice blend of new faces, veterans as well, leadership that you have to have in the Big 12. What has stood out to you in these first few weeks of, I would say, official fall practice? Yeah, definitely leadership, no doubt. I think that um, particularly these three young ladies have really um, stepped up and shown a great maturity, great um, a great desire to, to elevate this program. Um, you know, they all got extended minutes last year, particularly um in, it was in a situation where when we were really injured, you know, these, we got, we had two key injuries early in the, before a season even started. And, um, these two young ladies right here had to, to play a lot of significant minutes, right? As, as sophomores, Jordan Merritt obviously came in and played, um, in her first year, a, a tremendous role for us as well. But I've just really seen a great maturity and just a great level of, um, of leadership that, that we haven't had in the past that they really are on a mission. The portal, I think, these days in college athletics, it swings both ways. Uh, rosters sometimes don't always feel super stable. Mm -hmm. But you've got three here that now have kind of been in the trenches with you. You talk about that leadership and how it is. But how has that been uh, – how have they been able to – utilize that on the floor every day in practice competition wise and improving their games yeah we have um three juniors that have been here all three years and they played significant minutes last year as sophomores and um so they really understand the culture that we're building and and how we've built it where it came from um we have seen a togetherness and a unity that we haven't had in the past um i believe we're returning our top six scores and to be honest um you know that's pretty rare in this day and age so we have a really great group of returners that understand the the assignment and we've added some kids that are hungry to prove themselves um, um you know on on a different stage and uh, i just think it's been a really really exciting um fall for us the summer was fantastic and uh, it's probably been the best one since i've been here Sounds great. My first question goes to Bailey, a 2024 All Big 12 honorable mention. You averaged just shy of 14 points a game last year. Huge breakout freshman year, incredibly solid sophomore season. Now as you head into year three, what has been your focus on the floor in the offseason to elevate your game? Uh, my focus this offseason has been getting bigger, stronger, faster. Um, every year we have to get better. We have to get better individually. We have to get better as a team. So just getting better at those things is going to help me on the court, and I'm looking forward to this year. Jasmine, you doubled your scoring average from your freshman to your sophomore year. Uh, that doesn't happen very often for a lot of kids. What was the difference for you a season ago? And kind of the same question, what's your focus been to be able to have an even better junior season? I think the difference for me a season ago was just my confidence level and then, you know, my coaches and my teammates just putting me in the best position on the court to be successful and me taking advantage of that. I think going into this next season, I'm really going into the leadership role um, and that's just going to help me elevate my game physically on all cylinders. Just like Bailey said, I'm working to get stronger and faster at the same time, but also being that vocal leader for the team. Graduate senior Jordan Merritt, uh, you led this team in blocks. You played three seasons at Florida in the SEC. So you've seen some different leagues. You've seen some different conferences in your time. When you came back to your home state, um, what was the best part for you about returning home to play in the state of Texas last year? I think the best part of returning home is just being closer to my family, just having them be able to come to games. You know, going to Florida was a pretty long trip for them. Um, so just being four and a half hours away, my sisters can come, um, you know, any weekend, my mom, my dad, grandmother. So just having all of them be able to support me, that's probably been the biggest thing. It was also your first taste of the Big 12, which is a different league and high level competition night in and night out. Just talk a little bit about what that is like. It's a grind as players. We know what it's a grind for coaches and prep and travel and all of those things. But when you're in the trenches doing it, it's a little bit different. Talk about how how good of a league this Big 12 really is. 
Yeah, the Big 12 is, is awesome. It's a totally different level of competition outside the SEC. They're really both great conferences, but I feel like the Big 12 is it's more physical. Um, it's a lot of, you know, constant contact with other players, <laughs> game in and game out. So just being able to um, have the best people on our staff to help us get stronger, faster, to be able to compete against those high-level athletes, um, very aggressive athletes. So just being able to level that playing field there and just allow our skills to shine through that. So it's just been a really awesome transition. I've learned a lot about myself as an individual, as a player, um, as a woman. So just being able to embrace that has been amazing. Well, and I'm sure coaches say even with contact, you got to stay out of foul trouble because she wants you on the floor, not sitting next to her. Uh, for our media out there, if any of you have any questions, please raise your hand. We have one right here in the front. Matthew Postens, Heartland College Sports. Coach, you've already used the terms, we're on a mission, we understand the assignment, this is your alma mater. I know your goal is to get to the NCAA tournament and finally get back there. What is it about this team that makes you optimistic that this is the team that finally gets you over the hump after a couple of years of just falling short? Yeah, um, the the core that we've developed with them, right, and the experience. I think we have a really solid group of young ladies that um, are really bought in. Um, as I said before, in this day and age in the transfer portal, um, you know, we retained um, the majority of our kids that are really – um, together and unified. Um, we are deeper, we are stronger, we are more athletic, um, we're bigger um, in every position. And uh, I think that that depth is really going to help us sustain the grind of the Big 12, um, but also even through injuries. You know, I think now if, if we do have a couple of injuries along, along the season, um, we have other kids that can step up and still fulfill those roles. Uh, we've got another question right here in the front. Hi, uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. And this is for the players. Um, with with the, the incredible growth and the popularity of women's basketball, I'm just wondering how you all personally have experienced that and in, in what way and how have you sensed it? Bailey, I'll have you answer first. Um, like you said, it's it's a huge thing right now, women's sports. And even being in Lubbock, Texas, we're able to feel it. Um, we go to class, we walk down the streets, people recognize us, people want to take pictures with us, we sign tons of things. Um, and it's not always been like that, so it, it is truly a blessing to be playing basketball right now in this day and age. And I just hope that it continues to grow tremendously the way it is now. Jasmine? Everything that Bailey said and, you know, us being able to take advantage of NIL opportunities also has really, you know, just shown and grown that the women's game is growing. And, you know, just being able to be part of that and, you know, being in this, like, day and age now where everybody supports women's basketball, you have the Lubbock community that stands behind Lady Raider basketball, 10 toes. And so it's just going to continue to grow, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, I feel like the biggest part for me that has been most impactful is probably the young girls that come up to us um, after the games and just tell us how much that, you know, they look up to us and, you know, how they want to be us one day. So just being able to inspire the younger generations. Um, it's also really funny. I'll be in the grocery store and someone will come up to me because I have my Lady Raider shirt on. They're like, oh, my goodness, I watch women's basketball. Like, people talk about it like it's a flex. So I'm just like, I love that you're tuned in. I love that we're locked in. So it's just awesome to be at the, the start of this and just to continue to see where it goes from here. A lot of history of great fan support in Lubbock, Texas. There's no doubt about it. Coach, one more question for you as you talk about this mission and what you want for this team moving forward this year. You also have to think about your non-con and what you did. So talk just a little bit about what you did with your non-conference schedule, how you approached it, and what you want to see from this group early. Yeah, we, we definitely um, scheduled up and, and with purpose, right, because uh, we know that we have to have a good resume for the NCAA tournament, and we, we need to be battle-tested before we get to the Big 12. So um, a couple of road games uh, where we go to SMU, we go to Arkansas, and, and play on some 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 pretty tough home courts um, on the road. And then also we, we scheduled Washington State at home. I think that's going to be um, a, a great game for us. Uh, we go... 
to the Paradise Jam and play Florida State and Gonzaga. Um, I think those are going to be really difficult games and, and tough tests for us um, on, a, on a neutral site and, and in a great place, right, to play. So some distractions there that we're going to have to have to make sure that we uh, block out uh, as best we can. But I do think that we have a quality non-con schedule, and I think we're going to get tested really early. Well, fun in the sun for all of you, and that is something to look forward to. Thank you to each and every one of you. We wish you the very best of luck. And up just shortly with us will be the contingent from UCF.